Perhaps the moon knows the secret of the new sound. So bright and pull on the surfaces. So bright and they all get on my face. So bright and open your mind. Let us begin our quest to find the new sound.
All right, I'm so. Are we? We're live. I'm not hearing you there, uh, Quarter Black Garrett. Two, three, four. There we go. Are we good to go? Yeah. Audio wait. Are we good? We're good. We. Uh, are I didn't good. hear you. As half Asian uh, lawyer Bill Richmond is his mic live as well. It is. Okay. Good. All right. Listen, this is this is something that's a little bit uh, more impromptu. So we are live. I can confirm. <clears throat> I can say that, and I'm not lying. Yep. <laughs> Biggest, biggest story we ever released, and I start it with a lie. We're live. No, wait, what? Huh? Okay. So uh, we're live. I'll say that for the last time. Uh, before I dive into anything here, and because I genuinely worry that this stream and content could be taken down, I ask that everyone watching right now, please tweet, Facebook, Instagram, post this wherever you can, yep. include the hashtags YouTube 2020 election blacklist, and Crowder exposes YouTube. I know that's self-serving, but we want to make sure that people know where to go to find this stream. We are live streaming to the Blaze TV right now in case the feed gets cut, and I want you to know that I expressly give permission for anyone out there to screen record and pirate this stream in the event that it's banned and this content removed. Um, if this, what's, that, what's going on there? I can hear you. Hey, don't worry about it. All right. Just keep going. You're good. So it's going to take a little bit to sort of unpack, but let me state on the outset that I and the team here at, um, at Lauder with Crowder have uncovered what I believe to be undeniable proof of Google and YouTube's current meddling in the United States presidential election, directly. I want to be clear so there can be no misrepresentation regarding the information I'm going to present. Uh, again, please tweet Facebook, get this trending. What I'm about to show you is, what I'm about to discuss, it's not a left or right issue. We've heard that so much it's become a cliche, but it really does affect anyone who believes in fair and honest elections, okay? Let me work backwards, understanding that I am going to get to photographic and videographic what I believe to be irrefutable evidence of altering the fundamental landscape of the election. Let me start backwards. Uh, many of you remember the Vox Edpocalypse, okay? That was a, a time in which this program was a target of a selectively edited smear campaign from the company Vox, um, and it should be noted in, in which the parent company, NBC Universal, Comcast, they have at least a 34% ownership stake. The event, actually, the controversy went all the way up to the top of YouTube with Susan Wojcicki herself even commenting on the story publicly. Was it the Recode conference? Yes. Something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it should be noted publicly say, stating that we had not violated any guidelines. So while we were found to be in no violation of YouTube uh, official policies or guidelines, in order to appease the leftist torch mob, we were completely demonetized on this channel meaning that we would no longer be able to sustain a living on the platform. Now, it should be noted that behind the scenes during the Vox Edpocalypse, my half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, who will be here in a second to uh, speak about this more with me, uh, him and I received a phone call from YouTube representatives who refused to give their name or any additional information outside of a pre-written statement. We were told that they had extensively reviewed our channel in full and that the violations with the channel, or the, uh, I guess, not necessarily violations, but what it was that we had done which warranted demonetization, let's go, there's no official term for it, that the detailed follow-up would be sent in an email so that we could attempt to rectify the situation and remonetize ourselves. This is all we ever received. We have the email up right here. Yep. So despite multiple follow-ups asking for the promised details, YouTube went to complete radio silence. Again, I'm explaining this so you understand the backstory when we get to the evidence that doesn't involve me at all directly. Um, YouTube went to complete radio silence. We even removed over 50 videos that are now available exclusively for Mug Club members at The Blaze. Yep. Uh, even though they didn't list 50 videos that could potentially be a violation. We took our shirt out of the merch store to be on the safe side. We continued to reach out, by the way, all the while to YouTube to complete radio silence. And, and I, this is not a sob story. Your support in joining Mug Club was so overwhelming. We more than made up for the losses and demonetization very quickly. Um, so I really appreciate it. it was support that we needed then. And we would absolutely welcome now for those who haven't joined uh, consider it, especially given the information I'm about to reveal. There's no promo code or anything like that. You just search Mug Club and um, we would appreciate you joining. Here's the thing. Demonetization is never what really bothered me. So let's get closer to the issue that we're about to discuss here. Um, it, it was a canary in a coal mine, if you will. I've, I've openly said many times, I would gladly take demonetization for the rest of this program's lifespan if it guaranteed that the organic reach and the search algorithms were corrected and they were transparent. Because, and, and this is central to what I'm about to release here, while money in politics is important and it's an issue, more impactful and more valuable, I would argue, in 2019 is information. I would actually argue that we've reached a point where big money in politics, it doesn't, doesn't wield nearly as much influence as the mechanisms of information 
or informational delivery in, in 2019. It's how Donald Trump was elected despite being opposed by many huge donors, by the way, huge Republican donors. And it's how many fake stories run by traditional media have been exposed. It's important because at the same time that demonetization was occurring with us, all of a sudden, our organic reach and traffic on YouTube was decreasing. Specifically, more specifically, the gaining of new subscribers on a daily basis. Um, everyone here, we did a complete overhaul. We would dig into our analytics. We tried to see what was happening. Yep. The odd thing was that on an individual video per video basis, our views were better than ever. So was our retention. So was the amount of time viewed. So are the overall interactions on videos. All the most valued metrics for video algorithms according to YouTube's own statements. What we noticed was a drastically reduced reach in, in search and organic traffic, despite having really created the kind of content that we always had and the kind of content that YouTube said they always wanted. I'm gonna grab some more. I don't know if you guys can hear, I'm a little parched. <sighs> Going up against the biggest company in the history of ever yeah. makes me a little nervous. Just a little makes me, I don't really get starstruck, but uh, this one uh, has me sweating. Not quite sweating blood like Jesus in uh, Gethsemane, but uh, you know, Gethsemane, is that what yeah, we were talking yeah, about yesterday? Anyway, guess sorry. Gethsemane. All right, okay, listen. I just deal with discomfort through jokes, and they're usually <laughs> worse than other jokes. Um, I give you this backstory so you understand how it is, really, that a late night host and a comic was able to stumble across some information that will be shared in this broadcast. It is only because of all this tomfoolery, if you want to call it that, if I may, on YouTube, that we had begun digging into the potential reasons for it, and we were watching everything like a hawk. We were continually running, effectively, comparative studies, analytics, testing for controls on a daily basis behind the scenes because of all that transpired. So I want to note, it's at this time where we discovered some very, very odd, I guess some peculiarities, we can say, in simply trying to find one of my own Change My Mind videos, an employee here, realizing that it was likely faster uh, than combing through the archives himself, our own video channel, because it's not necessarily the most robust platform for that yeah. on YouTube, he just ran a YouTube search, Steven Crowder changed my mind. And nothing, nothing showed up, which we thought was odd. And so we ran some other similar searches. Again, nothing. Now, when I announced this publicly, we received responses from you, numbering in the high five, potentially six figures. Uh, many viewers, okay, were receiving the exact same results, many of you. But a lot of you accused us of lying or doctoring photos because our content was showing up as normal in your search results, which didn't make a lot of sense to us. Uh, noticing a trend then on a hunch, my wonderful, brilliant, and terrifying researcher, Reg, he ran some uh, controlled experiments, if I may, using different VPNs. And that's when the puzzle pieces started coming together. The blacklisting of this channel and its content on search was occurring in the United States exclusively. Let me explain that, what, yep. what that means. That means that if someone searched Steven Crowder changed my mind in Argentina or any other country, the appropriate content showed up. If someone typed the exact same search in the United States, nothing. Mm. Now we found, or we were sent proof of this, uh, many of these examples from, from countries all across the world. And it was concerning for several reasons, okay? Not only because it provided a direct answer as to why the organic reach had plummeted, but more importantly, if th this is the number one conservative leaning channel of all time on YouTube, okay? One with a vast majority of our fans being in the United States. Right. And one that has hosted not, not just a few, but many national presidential candidates as well as political figureheads. This week, I think we have Rand Paul on the show. So why would YouTube do this? How could it be an algorithm? And this is going to get to more of the direct evidence of the current election, but I want you to follow the story here. This is why we are in a unique position to uncover this. Didn't intend for it to happen. We just wanted to find out what was, what was screwy about our channel. So how could it be an algorithm? And if they were doing this, by the way, to the largest, we were thinking the largest conservative presence on the platform, YouTube, um, despite in their own words, having found, they found no violations of policies in our part, what could this mean for the political landscape of America, more specifically the 2020 elections, okay? I expressed these concerns in a, in a cell phone video, a flippant cell phone video, making sure to communicate that at the time, I didn't have any evidence available to me of this occurring to anyone else, but I encouraged everyone out there uh, to send in your own test results. And I also expressed my concern in potential election engineering. 
So this is several months removed from the Vox Adpocalypse, a cell phone video. After this, for the first time since the Vox Adpocalypse, I was immediately contacted by YouTube. And this time, not by faceless, nameless people reading a statement, but representatives in positions of power who were looking to try and ameliorate the situation. Which, I, of course, I found odd. Why, yeah. why reach out to us now? Why did everyone refuse to talk to us when we were at the center of this, this national scandal that the CEO of your company had to address publicly when our livelihoods were on the line? Why did we receive complete radio silence? And, and now because of a throwaway cell phone video, direct contacts to the higher ups and assistants with our channel? Seemed really odd, uh, but wanting to act in, in, in good faith, we opened communications while we were still conducting more research experiments behind the scenes. And you know, the excuse that we often hear and that you'll often hear from YouTube is that all of these results are based on algorithms. That's kind of been the crux of this. Is these algorithms are designed really to best serve the most relevant content to viewing audiences. That's the constant defense. Obviously, that didn't add up in our case when people couldn't find our content exclusively in the United States. So after the initial call, uh, the contacts at YouTube were kind enough to switch the status of our channel to show the, I believe it's called the prominent user interface, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, and that includes a channel card, which identifies our channel and a link to the subscribe at the top, along with our videos and suggested links column. Yep. And we were, we were notified that, that not everyone had gotten this, including some other prominent channels. This is important because it proved two things. One, for the first time, okay, someone at YouTube was actually paying attention, and more importantly, too, that ultimately there was a person, or is a person, at YouTube who can make these kinds of calls, or at the very least can correct and guide them, as was the case with our channel. Finally, finally this brings us to some evidence that we just stumbled upon um, as it relates to the current DNC primary election. So many of you have probably guessed where this is going. A lot of you may not, but let me start this with Tulsi Gabbard already has a pending lawsuit with Google slash YouTube Alphabet for what she perceives as unfair treatment. Now I want to let Tulsi Gabbard explain uh, the case in her own words first. I know that you had some uh, problems uh, that you are contesting. Google did not yeah. treat you fairly after the last debate. Yeah. Tell us about that. Uh, look, in the first debate, uh, I was on the first night and I was the most searched candidate of that event. Uh, unfortunately, Google chose to arbitrarily block our Google Ads account for several hours at the time that was most critical for our campaign. Uh, I'm suing Google for taking that action. They've provided no valid explanation for why that was done. There was no wrongdoing or problem on our part, not because of me, but because of this monopoly, this power that these big tech monopolies have to simply shut out people arbitrarily. This is a threat to our freedom of speech, and it's an important thing for, for us all to stand united uh, in calling out and to protect, because whether you're a Democrat or Republican or on the left or on the right, uh, for a big tech monopoly to have this power, this affects all of us. Okay, and, and let me be clear, I don't really agree with, uh, with Tulsi Gabbard on a whole lot. Um, I wouldn't vote for her if she were uh, the candidate for president, but I can still tell right from wrong. Her lawsuit, let me be clear about this in case you didn't fully grasp it, it centers around her being blocked out from Google AdSense accounts. Now what that is, is an advertising arm run by Google and YouTube allowing you both to create and, and pay to promote ads or videos, as well as receive ads on your channel. Okay, two things here. One, I've also experienced the exact scenario that Tulsi Gabbard is describing. We've run ads here on YouTube for years. Okay, now what kind of ads? We've really only run ads where we run our videos as pre-roll ads before other videos, right? You know where you can click skip ad? Um, but although people don't skip, we just run our videos. We've been doing it for a long time. I was approached by YouTube to do this. We don't run as many ads, of course, as NBC, Universal, or Disney, Viacom, Vice, but we do what we can. Now, many of the ad campaigns that we've run here on YouTube through Google AdSense were actually engineered by YouTube employees themselves, again, who reached out to me and taught me how to create these ads and encouraged me to spend more money on these YouTube advertising campaigns. But at some point, they decided that these campaigns, the ones they initially created, were now a violation of policy and began locking them out. Not only that, 
But even though I was told the exact opposite, I had clearly been blacklisted from promoting any of my videos on the platform here. So again, I ran some tests uh, behind the scenes, and I tried to pick the most vanilla milk toast examples I could find of my videos, and I attempted to promote them as ads on the platform. Like this, uh, this long form conversation, I think is one with uh, climate change, uh, original Greenpeace member, Patrick Moore. And then of course, all of the civil productive change my mind segments. All were declined, all were deemed shocking content. Again, even though YouTube had helped design campaigns around these exact pieces of content and collected hundreds of thousands of dollars in advertising those same videos years before. So I say this because I want you to know I'm well aware of the screw jobs that can occur with AdSense without any answer, Ms. Gabbard. Second point. Most importantly, this establishes a record uh, with Tulsi Gabbard of Google YouTube altering the rules for a specific window of time when Tulsi Gabbard was trending or was widely searched due to a bump in the debates. You don't get that back. So now we enter the most, what I would say is, I would argue the most troubling portion of all of this, okay? Again, please do tweet it out. Use the hashtags Facebook, Instagram in case this gets removed. Is it still up? Are we still up? Yeah, we're still up now. Okay, good. So. Good-ish. Um, yeah. On Friday, Hillary Clinton, Rodham, in case you thinking of someone else, <laughs> Hillary Rodham Clinton uh, claimed that Tulsi Gabbard, well, she claimed that there were people who were Russian assets, and then it was confirmed that it was Tulsi Gabbard, right? Confirmed that she was talking about Tulsi Gabbard, accusing her of being a Russian asset, uh, and Tulsi's response had her trending. Number one on Twitter uh, I think it was, was this on Friday? It was last yep. Friday. That's when we were looking into this. Okay, so she was the number one trend. Actually, I think like number one through four because one might have been Tulsi, another might have been Russian Asset, another might have been Gabbard. The point is, she was the belle of the ball with many verified check marks, by the way, and pundits um, running with the story, fighting over whether she was a Russian plant. So during this time, we decided to, again, while Tulsi Gabbard was in the spotlight, run some comparative searches on YouTube. When we set our VPN, so I want to be clear, this is the crescendo. Share it, pirate this in case it gets removed. When we set our VPN to a non-United States country and we search for Tulsi Gabbard, her channel and the videos from her channel all showed up first. Yet again, when we switched our searches to the United States, however, nothing exclusively in the United States, the country in which she is currently running for president, you would receive no results from Tulsi Gabbard's channel or her videos until scrolling past the first page. Here's a video screen recording, in just in case people try to say that we've doctored it. By the way, these video screen recordings will be available as clips on YouTube should you want to use them uh, for articles. So, that Friday, you search, she's trending one on Twitter, all of a sudden, boom. Valve is pinched, you can't find her exclusively in the United States. You can if you're in Germany, you can if you're in Spain. United States, however, nothing. By Sunday, once the trend of Hillary Clinton's character assassination had subsided, the results for the US and other countries were magically switched back to being identical. Now, it's, it's, it's worth noting that her channel is uh, right now as far as I know it, omitted from both sets of results. So everyone out there, take some screenshots, do some VPN experiments. I assume they're going to be fixing this once this video is out, and I assume that someone there is watching this right now, so they may not necessarily be consistent. You don't always have the same result twice. Um, even though, the, by the way, they're the same, her, her channel is not as prominent as it was before. It, let me say this, Tulsi Gabbard is not my candidate. Like I said, I wouldn't vote for her. But this, this is chilling especially when you consider, let's think about this for a second. Again, we stumbled across this accidentally. I don't know if anyone else has proof that there is someone who flips a switch on YouTube to make your channel a part of the preferred channels network, whatever the hell it's called. We only found out because of the Vox Edpocalypse. And then we only found out because I flippantly mentioned that this reeks of election meddling. All of a sudden a phone call and someone says We've, we remedied that scenario. That means that if someone can flip that switch and it's not entirely algorithmic, or it's almost as though the algorithms are determined by a human being initially, it's not right. iRobot. That means that same person can flip off the switch for someone like Tulsi Gabbard. Hmm. All of this is spine ting, it, it is hair raisingly scary. And if you're interested in a fair election, whether for the presidency or, or just for the Democratic uh, candidate, 
for the presidency, this should raise some major red flags. The influence that big tech has and their willingness to manipulate information in the face of what should be a democratic election, regardless of whether it's happening to someone I support or not, is terrifying. So let me address some arguments, by the way, that I know will be presented. And I, I'm, I hope that you are being skeptical of this. I encourage you to be, and I encourage you to run your own tests. YouTube and Google will inevitably claim uh, one of three things, or several, because this is what we've run into. This is always what they claim publicly. One, that it's simply algorithmic. It's not. Again, this channel is singularly unique in that we're able to prove that it's not because our channel was fixed by someone manually. Someone flipped a switch, someone could unflip that switch for Tulsi Gabbard. Two, YouTube may try to pass this off as an accident, a result of a poor lower, lower level employee uh, with bad judgment claiming that this was an oversight and that the individual didn't make the proper corrections and they have since addressed the issue. Don't buy that either. Okay, why? We've been in direct contact with decision makers at YouTube who are aware of these problems and have been trying to uh, do damage control to fix the problems. Okay? It would stand to reason that the status of a current presidential candidate who is actively suing YouTube would be under the same kind of close watch from the world's biggest information and technology company, and that she wouldn't be someone pawed off, uh, pawned off on some patsy for the higher-ups. Doesn't pass a sniff test. Three. This is another argument they'll use, and this is most important. YouTube in the past has consistently argued that their algorithms, policies, that they are the results, um, well, they argue that it's a result of algorithms, but they do argue, let me be clear here, that the algorithms, the policies, the results that you find are often geographically dependent. That's something that we were told. It's something that many of you have been told. And that's because it's geographically dependent because it's designed to best serve viewing audiences with the most appropriate content for their search. I've heard this argument made a whole lot, and I expect it to be made now. If that's the case, I would implore YouTube, please, because I know someone, I know someone there is watching, could you please explain to me, your shareholders, and in all likelihood, a congressional hearing, why you believe it most appropriate in serving your audience to block the content of a United States presidential candidate exclusively in the country in which she is running? How is that best serving anybody? In the same way, how does it serve the audience searching for Steven Crowder, change my mind, to not show them what it is that they are searching for? I'm sure shareholders and people who, who want to understand how these algorithms and big tech work, they would love to know why it's in their best interest for users to not find the content they signed on for and are actively searching. How does allowing Tulsi Gabbard's channel and videos to show up everywhere around the world except for the United States best serve your audience? YouTube, you are in the information business. And I want to clarify this. We say big tech. No, it's the information business right now. From a business perspective, YouTube, how does it make sense to preclude your users from finding the content they are searching for specifically and passionately? The only answer I can come up with in the face of mounting evidence, is that it's not even profit-driven, but to an extent ideological. And finally, to the detractors who I know will say, well, Tulsi's not a serious candidate, right? We hear this a lot. In the grand scheme, it doesn't really matter. Tulsi's not a serious candidate. Okay, you know what? I get it. Not very high in the polls. People just, people said the same thing about us. Well, it's just some right-wing edgy channel. Who really cares? Well, actually, it's the biggest conservative channel in the history of the world's largest media platform because of you, and we are so grateful. I don't say that boastfully. I say that in a terrified, for, from a place of terror, because who knows where we'll be tomorrow. Uh, but the biggest conservative channel on the platform, they've actively tried to silence it. Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard is not a serious candidate. I hear that. Well, let me, let me ask you a question. Let's assume that's true. Why do you think that is? We often hear the left talk about big money in politics all the time, right? The Koch brothers, oil money. And listen, I think it's a problem, but the, the Koch brothers oppose Donald Trump. And money can't save people from the viral news cycle in 2019. Donald Trump, like it or not, is the new media president. He can affect the globe with his tweets. That's why it's an international scandal. You can't buy that. Bernie Sanders didn't have the money or the power that the Clintons did, and it took everything they had to try and shut him down. Why? Because of the radical new media landscape. Information in 2019 is more valuable in elections than money. And right now, I am confident in saying that Tulsi Gabbard is being barred from access to or delivery of 
necessary information. Sure, listen, we don't know whether Tulsi Gabbard uh, can get the votes and be a winning candidate. I'll give you that. J just like we don't know how large this very channel could grow if there were a level playing field. Let me paint a picture for you for people to say, well, she's not a serious candidate. I'm asking you why. Let's run this little thought experiment. If back in the 60s, well, let's even say early 50s through uh, the early, uh, sorry, late 50s through early 60s. Back in the 60s, JFK was completely banned from appearing on the only three main networks that existed, ABC, NBC, CBS, right? And then after a certain amount of time, it was an Indian going, boo. If he was banned from all of those networks, do you think he would have been the Democratic candidate? If he, were, if he had never been allowed to appear on those networks, uh, networks which, which reached, I think, 28 million homes, that was about, yeah, we have the source yeah. here, 60% of United States household. Do you think that he would have had the same fan base? Do you think he would have been a serious candidate on everyone's lips? I would argue likely not. Well, let's compare that. YouTube has 2 billion monthly active users and is used by 73% of United States adults. Google has a 90.46% share of the market as it relates to searches conducted online worldwide. It is far greater than the influence of every television network combined in the era of JFK or Nixon. Make no mistake, okay, this is the most powerful information company on the face of the earth today and likely to have ever existed. And they've repeatedly shown an inability, an unwillingness to invite, to engage, and sometimes they ultimately just block people from even having a seat at the table. We often hear folks say, and this has become a catchphrase, like I said earlier. But in this instance, I think this is accurate. It's, it's truly not a left or right issue. This is a fundamental issue that relates to the state of our republic. And I would hope that everyone, from the Young Turks to their subsidiaries, to Seth Meyers, to John Oliver, to folks in the Yang Gang, even the Tulsi Gabbard followers themselves, who I know have been asking questions if she's been getting a raw deal, hopefully this helps you. I, I would ask all of you, with whom I have very little in common, to see the gravity of this situation and in this instance come together to demand answers and transparency from the world's largest information company as it relates to free and fair elections. I will await YouTube's answers with bated breath. Sorry it wasn't all that funny because I had to make sure that I got this out and that I didn't say anything that held me legally liable. That's why my half Asian lawyer Bill Richman is here. Uh, how are, are we good, sir? Yeah, so far. All right, so far. Uh, and uh, please do, again, keep this going. We have some videos right now right on Twitter. Court yes. of Black Hair, we Twitter. had this prepped. We did our due Twitter diligence. And the hashtags are? Hashtags are Crowder Exposed YouTube. And I believe. I believe it's YouTube 2020 Election Blacklist. YouTube 2020 Election Blacklist and Crowder Exposes YouTube. So um, I want to make sure that you keep that going. These screenshots will be available to everyone. And to those who were asking, we said, listen, we think we're on to something. A lot of people behind the scenes. I know half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond had to deal with us. Poor guy was pulling, <laughs> pulling his hair out, but he's got a <laughs> thick mane. Oh, well, can you get it to us? We said, now, if we, get the, if we get this info to you now, it's going to go public and someone else is going to try to run with it and, and they might not get the story right. Um, so, yes, it's been a very stressful few days, but half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond, your thoughts? So I, I think that people don't necessarily, if you kind of sum everything up, you've given them a lot of information in order to be clear and to be detailed. And to really boil it down, Tulsi already publicly knows and has been publicly fighting since July when she filed her lawsuit against Google and YouTube to say that they had been screwing with her on the Google ad side. And knowing that the ads are the way that in this market, in this current economy, in our current tech world, how we communicate to voters, uh, whether you're on the left or the right, whether you're Republican or you're Democrat. And she already knows about that. And that's the same thing that we've had to deal with in terms of our own ads being removed and unable to actually do the kinds of things that every other platform is able to do with right. no clarity on the violations. So what the other parallels that we had here, and again, that's what kind of led to where we are now, is being able to see that not only is it ads and ads, her ads are ads, but it's right. also search for her and search for us. And that's the most incredible part about this is, you know, when we looked at it and we, we were very skeptical, you know, to say, hey, how could this be true? The spotlight is on them. Why would they continue to do this? And so, again, there's someone there. The, the kind of back and forth action makes it clear that there is a person making the decisions. Right. And I think your point right. is very, very key. It's actually mentioned in the amendment 
amended complaint filed by Tulsi Gabbard in her lawsuit against Google is that algorithms are written by people. Right. They are written with yeah. an intended result. They see the results, and their job is to monitor the results. So if anyone's out there thinking, well, you know, with all eyes on them, surely they didn't intend to screw with Tulsi's campaign, and to screw with her ability to rise in the polls, to screw with her ability to communicate to people on both sides of the aisle about her candidacy for the Democratic primary ticket, one still has to put the blame back on these companies for not taking the action that they could. It would be kind of going back to that first case that we dealt with together with Facebook. Remember, it wasn't, you know, uh, up at the top, they were saying, well, we had no idea that there was this group of contractors who were supervised right. by employees that had a written policy that included a blacklist and you happen to be on it. And, you know, but it was an accident, right? Well, clearly in the years that that's happened, that excuse no longer makes sense. For people who don't know, that was when, was it Engadget or Gizmodo? Gizmodo. That's yeah. how half Lawyer Bill Richmond and I initially met was uh, there was a list of people on Facebook to uh, throttle to make sure that they're they're um, really I think this was a list to make sure that their their content wasn't trending and it was like Breitbart Drudge Report some conservative organizations in yours truly for some reason going well this is really bizarre yeah. uh, and I reached out to half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond the thing is at that point they, they didn't argue it at all they just argued that well this was these were some rogue employees who did it and uh, we've corrected the problem and at that point, no one was really looking for it, right? We, we yeah. just stumbled across this. It was actually a friend who was a groomsman at my wedding who introduced me to, uh, to Half Asian Bill, yeah. and a wonderful friendship blossomed from there. <laughs> that being said, that can't be the case here because this is a current presidential candidate who is already suing the company. They wouldn't be able to say, well, we had no idea. We passed right. her off to some low-level employee. If that's the case, then you're far too inept to be the single biggest yeah. information delivery company in the history of mankind, and there needs to be some more oversight. Well, and, and I think the other the, the other question there is that when we saw the Facebook situation, remember, there were inquiries from the Senate, from Congress, uh, representatives were reaching out. There was many statements that Facebook had to make to explain and to try and give some information, and they were able to get away without having to say too much about exactly what had happened at that time, but had to really open the kimono, if you will. And here, there's really no other answer that YouTube can give other than to say, well, you've got to look at all the files and you've got to get a congressional hearing. I mean, these are the kinds of things where regardless of the validity on the legal aspects of Tulsi's lawsuit, I know she's had to switch from different claims. And actually, just a week ago, Google and YouTube filed a lawsuit. They filed a motion to dismiss her entire claim. Now, they don't want to provide any information. They don't want to provide any data. They don't want to provide any explanations, even just on that issue. So for them, on her being blocked, on her being blocked, just because, on the by, by the way, side. she doesn't know about this, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, this the this is very new information. No one, as far as I know, has talked about this or revealed this information that while she was trending last week, being accused of being a Russian asset, you search anywhere, not in the United States, Tulsi Gabbard's content shows up, search in the United States, ghost it. She doesn't know this. We'll, prob we'll, we'll be reaching out after this. And if you just want to draw the parallels there, on the Friday that we discovered this, on the Friday that she was, tw uh, that she was trending uh, because of Hillary calling her a Russian-backed groomed yeah. asset, right. that was right. the day that YouTube filed its motion to dismiss her claims. Mm. So if you're, if you're huh. asking as a consumer, you know, just like uh, you know, companies may try and use the law to be able to skirt and be able to use the current legal system to get away from answering questions, what they can't get away from are the customers. What they can't get away from are the viewers and the creators who want to know if I'm regardless of political ideology if I'm not the favored person am I going to be treated differently and here it's all very clear you know no no one there may be a lot of people who enjoy Tulsi Gabbard's frankness who enjoy her service to this country but have very differing views on her politically and I think that's most of us on on this show but that doesn't mean that we're again in that classic line no. we may not agree with what you're saying but we'll fight for your right to say it and what's yeah. clear now is that YouTube is not interested in fighting for your right to say it if you happen to be a disfavored Democratic candidate. And I think where we can also all find some common ground, we can all, you know, hold hands and sing Dahu Dorhe around the Christmas tree and agreeing that <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard is fine. She's a good looking hey, lady. Hey. Good looking lady. Not wrong. Watch, they'll throw this out due to egregious sexism. Because <laughs> yeah. I said she's an attractive woman. Oh, there's a it's, we're bridging yeah, the divide here. Um, no, something else that's also really odd to me is Tulsi Gabbard is. She's been tarred and feathered so much, she's 
really, I mean, she's pretty far left. She's only yeah. moderate as it relates to free speech. And she was the one who named a cutoff when it came to abortion at 28 weeks. Yeah. That's seven months. So I don't necessarily think she's a radical pro-lifer <laughs> right. at that point. <laughs> right. But it, it is odd. It's like, why isn't her stuff showing up? Why is this, why has the deck been so stacked against her? Is it because they want someone so much further to the left than Gabby? Or could yeah. it be this idea, you know, Hillary yeah. Clinton might toss her hat, hat back in there. We have no idea. This is entirely conjecture. It's just weird to me that she's seen as a Russian asset because of slightly conservative views, really libertarian views in that she's a non-interventionist and she thinks she shouldn't be able to have an abortion after seven months. Is that worth being blocked out? It's extreme, Stephen. It's extreme. I don't know. Well, don't it's, know. It, that, that is the craziest part about this is it, there's so much unanswered and there's only one company that has all of those answers. We can see the results, right? We can see yeah. the physical search results and how they get modified. And we can certainly uh, extrapolate from that the impact on not being able to have a voice when you are the most trending topic on Twitter in a very fast news cycle surrounding a Democratic primary. We can see all of that, but what we can't see is the motivation or the mistakes that were made. And, and those are the answers that the, the people of the United States, again, the people who don't get to see Tulsi Gabbard or Stephen Crowder's show when searching in results, those are the answers that need to be given. Right. And I want to be clear, too, full disclosure, we have spoken with YouTube um, in recent times, but those conversations are to be kept confidential. And we in no but we would no point discuss this with them, Tulsi Gabbard, or anything like this. I just want to be Correct. clear. Correct. Yeah, we have not discussed I don't know this. if I have to say that legally. Like, we didn't discuss Tulsi Gabbard with them. I don't know. You're the lawyer. Am I good? You're good. Okay. All right. I, don't, I just don't want to get I don't want to get sued because, you know, I use the wrong pronoun or something like that, and that's a violation of that. You're still not safe. Happened. But I, I, have, I will say this. I have, made my, I have not made myself available, but any of the uh, – I, I always am confused whether it's – uh, committee or a hearing when they do these, yeah. when they have these different so committees. The, so they have committees, they have subcommittees. Most, uh, I, I don't know if every single representative and senator is on a various committee, but I believe they are, and they are on maybe five, six, seven, sometimes even 10 or 12. And then those committees will have certain power to send subpoenas, to call people down to ask. Sometimes they just do it voluntarily, right? Okay. Because of the, hey, if you don't want to, if you don't want to show up, right? Susan Wojcicki says, hey, I'm, I'm just really too busy to answer questions about, you know, influence the Democratic primary, um, that, that's an answer in and of itself. So th there's a power there that can be exercised. And this is, if there are any aspects in which, uh, you know, you want to see the kind of coming together like you saw with Ted Cruz and AOC on some topics, yeah. these are the kind of topics because every side has these questions. Well, and I, I want to be clear, we haven't been available before, but both myself and half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond will make ourselves available if you need us to, would it be testify? Is that what it is at these it, points? It could be. It could testify. be maybe under oath, maybe in other uh, ways. So. Okay. Well, I want to make sure that you guys understand uh, to anyone who might be watching. Again, we've hosted politicians here on this show, senators, congressmen, people who ran for pre people who have run for president, who might be running for president. Um, there is no one out there who has had the same kinds of conversations relationships or the overall plethora of evidence that we have as it relates to YouTube because we've had to deal with it on the AdSense side. We've had to deal with it on the organic search side. We've had to deal with it on the demonetization side. And because of this, we have been aggregating so much research over the last several decades. We want to be clear. This is not us going, oh, it's censorship. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about dishonesty and misleading business practices as it relates to our case. As it relates to Tulsi Gabbard right now and this new evidence, and we are going to be searching for more, we encourage you to search for more and send it all to us. It is very disconcerting to see the amount of power that can be exerted over, if you want to call it just the election, but I think this goes far beyond the election. It goes to a shifting cultural political landscape. Yeah. Really, so let's, let's get rid of the top conservative channels that exist. And then let's get rid of the moderate Democratic candidates. I'm not saying this is exactly what's happening, but I am saying that undeniably, you look at it is so odd and there is no answer for why our content would show up in countries not called the United States and why a United States, oh, I always forget, Tulsa Gabbard, Congresswoman? Congresswoman, Senator. Congresswoman. I think she's a congresswoman. Representative. If I get that, she's a, yeah, yes, okay, representative. Why a United States Congresswoman would show up in, in, uh, in Chile and not the United States. None of the excuses we've heard thus far would work. It's algorithmic. No, it's not. We're the only ones who would have proof that it's not for a lot of these. The yeah. idea that it was an oversight, low-level employee. No, it's not. She's suing, and you guys filed a motion to try and dismiss this lawsuit. So it's obviously on your radar. Then it's the idea that you want to most appropriately serve content to people who are serving. Well, how, do you, how are you most appropriately serving the audience by not showing them the results from a sitting representative right now running for the United States presidency exclusively in the United States? None of those work. These are the excuses that have been trotted out before. My guess is they'll probably say, oh, you know what, it was a glitch. That's still really bad. If you want to say that we faked it, 
Great. We welcome that too. I really just want to hear some answers at this point. We all want some answers. And there's a, there's a very small window of opportunity here to get this right. That's why I want to be clear. We've been talking about this for a long time, our, our interactions with YouTube and, and our legal issues and run-ins that we've tried to play long ball and be as transparent as possible, as, be as minimal as possible, um, as, as compromising as possible when appropriate. But right now, if there is something happening, tipping the scales of the election. And this is so odd, we stumbled across, it's, it's the specific example that you out there thought had been going on. Last election cycle it was Bernie. You thought that the establishment was colluding against Bernie. This go around, Tulsi Gabbard almost boycotted the last debates because she thought they were treating her unfairly. And a lot of you echoed that sentiment. I can tell you whether people are treating her unfairly, okay, that remains to be seen. As far as how it relates to the information delivered on the platform, she is absolutely being treated unfairly. Yeah. And I don't want any of these people to be president. <laughs> I want to be crystal clear. Some people think because I've said that Tulsi Gabbard is hot that I want to, no, I don't want her to be president. I do, I don't. I'll absolutely pull that, pull that lever every day for Trump and twice on Sunday. But I want, and, and this is a big thing too, I want it to be an honest win when President Trump beats whatever candidate it is. And I want that national election, that general, to also be honest. I don't want Democrats to not be able to get a candidate. Say what you want about President Donald Trump. He was the candidate people wanted. You can't say that he was pushed by the Illuminati or the Koch brothers. None of them liked this guy. They all thought he was going to burn it down. It's the first time you have Republicans who went never Trump, right? There was a huge divide. He is the candidate that the people wanted, and the people who voted for him love him. Even though I disagree with Democrats, liberals on almost everything in 2019, not back to JFK, but today, I still want you to be able to have the candidate that you have selected through a process that should remain untainted. I want it to be an honest win, not a cheat. You know, I think one of the one of the questions that that we were looking at, and that I know you've been kind of doing some research on, if you can r recall the numbers, uh, comparing the the Russian meddling scandal to this. Right? Yes. And I think from just a sheer dollars comparison, it was a, a few thousand dollars of of ads from from Russian assets and actual Russian assets. Yeah. Uh, you know, trying to influence the I election. I think Reg can probably get that to me. Reg, I know you're in the the other room. I think it was three thousand something. And so you compare three thousand dollars and three thousand dollars of ads for Tulsi Gabbard would be the ads that she would probably run in just a few minutes trying to reach the platform of a Democratic candidate for this primary. And so when you compare those different numbers and you look at the impact here, there is a incredible question. And that's one thing that's interesting. In that motion that you two filed, they, they talk about, well, she admits that it was just a few hours. Well, just a few hours in a 24-hour news cycle it can be a lifetime. I mean, that can be millions of views. That can of be millions of messages. If it's a few out. hours after the debate, it's not even close. Exactly. And that, and comparing the circumstances there and how, oh, conveniently she's back up on Sunday while everyone else is watching football or at church. Yeah, well, especially actually even right now, we're top 10 trending, um, I believe, in the, uh, in the United States. Um, you can't buy that. That's kind of, I mean, I guess you can. I guess Samsung has, but they spend a ton of money, and it doesn't last very long, and then their, then their phones explode. You but um, the point is this kind of overall publicity, right, is something that people can't necessarily buy. I think it was – I'm pretty confident in saying it was $3,500 in ads, uh, Russian Facebook ads. How much do you think let, – let's do this. How much do you think Russia would pay if they could guarantee – that a candidate who they saw as the greatest threat, let's just say for an example. I'm not saying Tulsa Gabbard is the greatest threat. No people are gonna say, uh, plant, just stop. Mm -hmm. If someone want, let's remove the Russians. Let's say it's the Chinese. Sorry, half Asian, Bill. If someone wanted okay. to, uh, <laughs> to stack the deck of the election, right? How much do you think they would be willing to pay to guarantee that the most threatening candidate was not turning up in any organic search algorithms? I'm not talking about just shutting Tulsi Gabbard out, and us, by the way, but Tulsi Gabbard out. This is, about, this is Tulsi's party. It's not us. We'll come back. We have some more info <laughs> for you eventually on stuff going on with our YouTube. But right now, it's about, it's about Tulsi. She's earned this. Yeah. How much would, would you think that these people would pay to ensure that, let's say, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, whoever it is, doesn't show up when you search for them? It's a transaction, okay, behind closed doors. I do not want Donald Trump to show up in search. All right, well, what do you want to pay for that? If you guarantee, do you guarantee that he won't show up if someone searches his name in United States? What if they search it in Germany? I don't give shit about Germany. 
What about uh, what about in Dagestan? I don't give rats ass about Dagestan. <laughs> but if search in United States, how can you guarantee me that their channel will not show up for at least one or two page because we have numbers that show people do not search beyond first page. And if YouTube said, we guarantee you that Donald Trump or we guarantee you that Tulsi Gabbard will not show up, I will pay, insert how many millions that you want here. How, at least eight figures. Yeah. And you add that up, the totality of the election span, that's absolutely insane. We're not just talking about blocking her out from running ads, which everyone else can do. We're talking about the organic algorithms tipping the scales against her. That, that, and, and the worst part is you're fighting ghosts. You're fighting ghosts and there's no accountability. They don't have to answer. It's amazing to me that they don't, can they legally, with Tulsi Gabbard, would they legally be able to dismiss it and just not provide any answers as to why she was blocked out from advertising? I mean, there's a judge who's, who's going to look at all the arguments, make the decisions. They haven't, Tulsi's team hasn't even had the opportunity to file the response. I mean, the motion was just filed on Friday. Again, the day that her search results were blocked right. in the United States while she was trending number one in the United States. Um, but once ultimately the, the core of the, are the arguments are there and, and frankly, any ability to not get the answers from the lawsuit is an indictment of our current statutory system that would allow a company like YouTube or allow a company like Facebook to be able to say, hey, we're just a platform. People just send messages. They post what they're going to post. We don't edit those contents. We're not a publisher. We're not a broadcasting studio subject to other restrictions. Right. And what's clear here is that their action that they're taking, separate and apart from the, the more egregious sin of interfering with the election and with a specific candidate, um, is the issue of wh whether or not they are on one side or the other of that publisher platform divide. And what everyone continues to ask and what they continue to get pressed on but don't give clear answers is which is it? Just pick one. I, I almost don't think, I mean this is me, not, and I'm not a lawyer, but the fact that Google and YouTube host debates themselves, seems to me that that would enter the equation, that they're no longer just a neutral platform where people tend to go to watch debate streams, when yeah. it's actually hosted by Google YouTube and people are sending in questions from Google YouTube. That's why Tulsi was going to protest the, protest the last debate, because she was saying she thought she was un treated unfairly yeah. by Google. That's got to open the door to some higher standard. I think all of those different factors go into play, because it's a pretty complex analysis to decide, are you on one side of the divide or, other, or, or the other? But when you add all of this up together, it, it creates a, a scenario that's hard to deny when you're uh, determining what ads are going to be placed, when you're determining what people can say, whether they're advertising a business or not, or it's political ads, if you're changing what people can find and how easy it is for them to subscribe or get notifications, if you're making it difficult for people to be able to find you in search results or to find you in suggested feeds, I think by definition, somewhere along there, you cross the line into being an editor. Right. Um, and when you've edited the content and you become an editor of content, the whole landscape shifts. And that's not even to get into the idea of you know, the paid partnership program and monetization, where YouTube applies different rules as far as, uh, and I would imagine the same applies in running ads, where they say, well, not everyone has a right to post on YouTube, but not everyone has a right to be a, par a partner, to be paid. Yeah. And at that point, it seems like you're venturing well into the realm of publisher because you are determining who yeah. can and who can't make money off of YouTube, which is fine. I'm fine with But again, there needs to be some sort of transparency there. In my opinion, you are the lawyer. All right, the hashtags, we're going to go. We'll keep you updated. Hopefully, we hear some something back. Hopefully, you hear something back. Look for the statements in the public and look for those three arguments that they always make. They don't hold water, that it's just an algorithm. It's not. There's a person. It was some low-level employee. It absolutely couldn't be. Or the idea that the algorithms best serve the audience. You Tell me how you best serve the audience by not serving Americans uh, information regarding a current American running for president who's also a current United States representative. Look for those three arguments and immediately dismiss them and ask for another answer. And please run your own searches, not just Tulsi Gabbard, not just Stephen Crowder, change my mind, but other presidential candidates, political topics. The only way that this gets out, the only way that this gets corrected is, of course, legally. And like we said, we will make ourselves available for any hearings or cross-examinations or whatever legal terms Bill knows. Yes, what you're about to say. I was going to say, for those who are skeptical, and, and I know this is going to get out further than just our normal kind of right-leaning or conservative groups, this, this will hit all the different types of groups in America. In case you're just not concerned about a conservative or a not uh, liberal enough candidate being restricted on YouTube, and maybe you think that's okay, I, w I would ask you to go back and look at the uh, different lawsuits complaints that were made against YouTube and Google and Facebook for complying with the uh, restriction of LGBT content, of other left-leaning content in countries like Saudi Arabia or China or Russia or other countries like that. The power that they have is acknowledged 
they acknowledged yeah. using the power. And now we have evidence that they're using it to interfere with an election. Yeah, and I would I would say I was about to go, and I felt like I was on a roll. But I think that's such a good point. And I, I, even though I know it's really easy for a lot of people out there to demonize us because you know we have a shirt that says "Socialism's for Figs," and you say we don't really care. No love lost if we're gone from the channel. Um, for big tech companies who talk about their philanthropy and talk about being able to affect positive change on a global scale, right? And so it's easy to hate us because you think, well, we make jokes, therefore it must be, if there's a racially charged joke, it must mean that someone is racist, or if we're conservative, it must mean that we're a Nazi, right? Uh, think about what this means overall for not just LGBTQ, but people in other countries who are still fighting for their civil rights, who are still fighting for their rights to access information freely if you have the biggest tech monopolies, tripopolies, if that's a word, uh, working with governments to enforce their policy or to dictate what governments are installed. And I would also ask, what possible altruistic argument could be presented here right now? It's easy to say, well, Stephen shouldn't, a lot of with Crowder, Stephen Crowder shouldn't be on YouTube. Okay, fine. It's easy to say, I don't know, Dennis Prager shouldn't be on YouTube because he's one of those Nazi rabbis. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, but how do you say, you know what? Morally, we're justified in making sure that people who are searching for Tulsi Gabbard don't find her in the United States. That's the right thing to do. I just don't see a moral case, even if we disagree on everything. And I, I don't see a moral case because I don't see uh, it as a moral decision to ever silence voices of dissent simply because uh, you can, even though it's unethical and it's what you claim to not do. But I, I get it. That's just me. That's my worldview. But I don't see how anyone, even from a leftist worldview at this point, could look at this scenario and say, yeah, that's the right thing to do because I don't like her. There's nothing good about this here, folks. Nothing. And I also don't want you, I don't want you to assassinate the mess. I, again, I'm not a Tulsi Gabbard person. She may not even want to come on the show to talk about this because people scare her off. And if you're afraid to do the show, you don't have to do the show. But I want this info to get out to as many people as possible. Please keep it trending, post it, write articles. I know we have a, is it Crowder Exposes YouTube? It is a yep. 2020 election blacklist. Yep, YouTube 2020 election Here, blacklist. I'll put it up. And I, I encourage you, comment. We're gonna leave this stream up. Anything, any upside that you can see to this happening right now. I, I don't. I, I fail to see it. And I try to, the reason we do devil's advocate on this show, and the reason we do change my mind, is because if I firmly believe if you cannot argue your ideological opponent's position, you have no business holding your own. I can't. I cannot make the case for why any of this is justifiable. And not happening to me, but happening to other people right now, most notably Tulsi Gabbard. If someone can make that case, I would love to hear it. We'll keep you abreast as it relates to our channel specifically and our content. Uh, there likely won't be a show tomorrow. I think we have Rand Paul on the program live on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much. I appreciate you bringing with us. I'm going to go back to hopefully just just doing comedy because I'm not a newsbreaker. It's not my strong suit. This 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 fell in my lap and I didn't want it. All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you.